guys, Urban was saying that you guys played your best game two weeks ago against yeah. Michigan State, the receivers. Mm -hmm. And then last week, not so so much. How much, though, is conditions realistically a factor in the throw game? I mean, the ball's slippery, the, the, it's hard, it's yeah, cold. I, mean, I, th I think the conditions always play a part. Uh, I mean, it was, it was not a great atmosphere and, and weather condition to throw the football, certainly. But it's not an excuse. I mean, we got to be able to throw the football in any condition. But I, I think it definitely affects it. But it wasn't It wasn't our best game. It wasn't terrible. But it, it, coming off of the week before, we, we wanted to take a step, and we didn't take that step. So, As a, as a receiver's coach, when you watch the play where JT kind of eluded pressure, stepped up, Threw off balance to uh, I think it was Jalen who mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Jalen. Yeah, it was. Um, just how how difficult of a play is that to make at that position? I mean, that's, playing that position is hard enough as is, but that, but that play specifically being able to elude pressure, find a window, and still remain a passer under pressure that's tough for anyone to do. I mean, a lot of quarterbacks you see will scramble in that situation because you know under pressure a lot of times you just try to escape. But he, but he stayed a passer. He slid. He found a window and found an open receiver, and that obviously resulted in a big play and a touchdown. So it was, it was impressive for him, but it's impressive for anybody. I mean, that's, that's tough to do, for sure. Nick, uh, Urban mentioned that maybe you guys hadn't emphasized ball security as much the last couple of weeks as you should have. Um, what does that mean, or how does that change your approach to coaching your guys? I mean, it really hasn't. I mean, there's been a, a, an increased emphasis, I'd say, as a whole. But I mean, that's something that's emphasized week in, week out. I don't, I don't want to say. I, I coached no different on Sunday at practice than I have any other practice. I mean, that is ball security is the utmost um, emphasis with my guys because if they're going to touch the ball, they need to secure it, obviously. And I mean, looking at Jalen's fumble that he had when he was playing offense on the goal line there. I mean, he 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 held the ball correctly. He had it high and tight. He had it secured. I mean, it was just. One of those things where he, he, he didn't have great strength on the ball and it got hit kind of perfectly. The guy's helmet hit the ball and it was it was something that I don't know that uh, other than having the ball in the other hand that he could have done much about it. But but fumbling the football is, is unacceptable, unacceptable. So we've obviously addressed that and will continue to coach it hard, you know, every practice. Is there, is there something that it takes to be able to bounce back from that. I mean, Dontre had that problem two weeks ago, fumbled, scores a touchdown. Uh, you know, what does it take to bounce back from something, something like that? Well, I think when you're invested as a football player and, and, and you care about your teammates and care about your team, when you fumble the football, you know how detrimental that can be to your team. And it's just really, it's, it's hard to overcome. Um, it's something that's necessary. It's something that, that a skilled athlete, really any athlete, needs to be able to overcome adversity. But it's not easy to do, especially if you're invested in care. And, and so, that was something that was hard for, for Jalen in this game. It was hard for Dontre the game before, and Dontre did a great job coming back and making a play. And, and Jalen needs to do that this coming week, for sure. I want to ask you about redshirting. I know Urban's not a big fan of it, but it's really benefited a lot of guys, including Michael Thomas. Could you address how much that year really helped him and just your philosophy on redshirting? Um, yeah, it, it's not something that we look to do. We don't want to do it. I mean, we, we feel like if you're going to redshirt, that means you're not quite good enough and, and you might get out-recruited in the long run then. But for Mike specifically, that was something that it worked. It, it fueled his mentality and his approach to the daily grind because he was so hungry for taking a year off, especially the year ending, how it ended. It's, it really did wonders for him. Um, it's, it's, Every guy approaches and comes out of a red shirt year differently, and it really worked for him and, and how he went about his business. So it was it was very positive in his case. About Jalen, uh, obviously a yeah, tough game for him. How do you kind of get him back, uh, make sure that his confidence doesn't wane? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing for him is, is facing the adversity after the game as much as during the game. I mean, he, he played actually a pretty good game. I mean, he had 100 yards receiving almost, and, and, and he – he graded high other than those glaring mistakes that we all saw. And then um, it's, it's more a young kid that, that then has to face the social media backlash and, and, and the, the hypothetical fans that, that want to say just absolutely derogatory things on, on a 19-year-old. That, that That's the stuff that's hard for him to overcome, I think. But he's been great. I mean, he's had a great mentality. He had a great practice on Sunday. So I think he'll be he's going to be fine. But, but I think that's harder for a teenager to overcome than, than anything. How hard is it 
for you as a coach to know that those kind of comments are out there and you know he is a 19 year old and, and how do you shield him from it if you can't you can't really I mean you, it's 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 kind of comes with the territory right people are going to praise you for doing well they're going to be critical when you when you do something that's not positive so it's something it's kind of a, in the growing process of an athlete at this level that he's got to get used to and he's and I think he is just understanding that with the good comes the bad I mean you could also not be at Ohio State not getting praise for a great game and that wouldn't be as fun so it's something that you got to learn to deal with yeah Zach uh, Urban was in here talking about how y'all y'all didn't take that next step as a group like mm -hmm. coming off that Michigan State game as receivers mm -hmm. you had three guys catch touchdown passes uh, what, what is he talking about what was missing uh, Saturday uh, that, was it like running crisp routes? Was it uh, blocking? Uh, what, what, what was missing from the group? I, I think it was – we obviously have a mission, my position, to be the best receiver core in the country. And we took a step towards that against Michigan State, and we wanted to take another step against Minnesota. Now, whatever the reason, the, the, the snow, the cold, the dog ate my homework, whatever it is, it's, it's just an excuse at that point. We didn't block as well as we have blocked, and we didn't execute the throw game as well as we did previously so there's a number of reasons number of excuses at the end of the day it's did you get better from the game before or not and we did not now we, it wasn't like we were a glaring issue on offense or with the team but it just wasn't the progress that we wanted so yeah, I, know. That's what I mean you know like the, 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 the interception like that turned the game there you know I mean mm -hmm. that was just an overthrown pass that the guy ran sure. down and things like that I mean were routes not being run crisply I mean what what you know what I mean yeah what are you talking uh, about Little things, I mean, just attention to detail, attention, depths of routes, spacing of routes, and like a lot of times what wide receivers don't understand is they feel like if they got open, they did their job, but that's not always the case. You have to be at a certain depth at a certain time in a certain space and then get open. You can't just get open when you feel that necessary. And, and there was times of panic where routes weren't run at the correct depth, maybe a couple yards short or a couple, a couple yards too tight, and, and that, you know, it doesn't look like it's, as big of a problem as it is. A guy gets open and you say, oh, shoot, he overthrew it. Well, he might not have been where he's supposed to be. So just little details that, that we've gotten better at and, and needed to continue to get better at that maybe we didn't. You know, one thing, you know they're asking about Jalen, but Jalen, obviously, when he catches the ball, he is intent on doing something with it. Without uh, a doubt. How do, you, how do you do one thing without taking away that? I mean, how do you tame him one side, but uh, yeah, not I mean, take away that element? Without a doubt. I mean, he, he's an aggressive ball carrier, certainly. but. But his issues were not in that aggression. His issues were catching punts, obviously, and that's something that he just, he's just he been phenomenal at and just didn't have a great game for whatever reason. And then he fumbled on the goal line, like we talked about. But I mean, I think that's something that, that we can get corrected and without taking anything away from his aggress aggression with the ball, because that's one of his greatest traits. He is aggressive. He's trying to make a play. He's trying to attack a defense or attack coverage. So we can definitely fix the issues without hindering his what he's what makes him good Zach, uh, James Clark was a highly recruited guy had the injury last year of course um, is that still holding him back a little bit or how close is he to yeah I, I think it is a little bit maybe maybe more psychologically than anything because he's 100 percent or, or close to it I think he still favors it a little bit but he's gotten better I mean through the course of this fall he came into fall and just didn't look the same as 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 we had hoped he would look coming off the injury. But he's gotten better and better, and you're starting to see it a little bit now where I would hope that given some time, given some you know, some success where he can gain some confidence, that will come back. And that, that's kind of our plan right now is get him that success so that he can get a little confidence in his leg and in his speed and his inabil in his ability so that he can take that next step and kind of start to contribute around here. So early in his career, do you have to remind him of that sometimes? Like, hey, you're just a redshirt freshman. Your time will come? Or No, I mean, I – no, that's not really how we operate. I, I think it's kind of a we expect you to contribute now. I don't care if you're 18, 22, 25. It doesn't really matter. It's we got to go. And so what he needs to understand is and what he does understand is he's coming back from a pretty significant injury, but it's healed. And he needs to gain confidence in that and start playing like he should be playing as a second-year guy. Zach, with the zone six stuff and stuff in your room this year, did you really want your guys to have an identity like that I mean, within the team dynamics, but really take on something other than just you know being the wide receivers? Yeah, certainly, certainly. I mean, it, we operate on the power of a unit, and, and and I wanted our unit to be the strongest unit 
on the team in the country, whatever it is. And, and however that mentality got developed, I wanted to kind of help that along. And, and it started coming together in two days. It really started coming to, coming together in spring. It started to get stronger in two days in fall camp. And then we started to go through the season. And that was something that they kind of came up with on their own and that I helped fuel. And, and it's a mentality and, and a lifestyle that they have adapted to and bought into. And so it's it's within the team concept, it's basically us saying we're going to hold our own as a receiver core. That's, that's our job and our commitment to the team. So that's what they've bought into and, and really ran with. What does that, just the difference, it just interests me, the difference of that. I mean, every group is tight and wants to be as good as possible. Mm -hmm. But what you just, it seems like you guys have taken it that one little step farther. I mean, do you think it does? Does it make guys more accountable to each other? Does it inspire guys to, to hold up their individual part of it more? What do you think that does? Yeah, I think it, I think it just kind of, uh, gives a, a mentality to what we're striving to get to. It, it, it makes them, it reminds them of what we're trying to be constantly and, and a lifestyle that we're trying to live, a, a, a way we play 24-7 in practice and games. And, and I think you're right that, that that, whatever you want to call it, nickname has given them a constant reminder of, listen, this is what we're trying to do, why, how, why we're trying to do it and how we're going to do it and nothing else is acceptable. That is the lifestyle we're going to live as a core. And so whatever the reason, that nickname, that, that mantra has kind of reminded them constantly that this is how we're going to live. This is how we're going to operate. This is how we're going to play. And nothing else is going to be accepted as a unit. And Urban just had mentioned that he had a conversation with you maybe talking about if Jalen needed to come off punt return, but then you guys talked about how aggressive he is mm -hmm. to the ball. Can you just maybe talk about that, of, of the things that – like about him as a punt returner back there. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think obviously the switch w was made whatever five weeks ago, four weeks ago, because we felt I felt like and Coach Meyer felt like he, you know, he was really gave a lot to our unit, being aggressive to the ball, catching the ball, and really not necessarily gaining yards after the catch, but but really preventing us from losing yards where the ball's rolling. Or he, he was very aggressive to the ball, and that's a, a trait that we really liked. And so we put him in that situation, and he's been phenomenal since we put him there. This last game he had two hiccups. I, I don't want to jump to any conclusions. It, it was just kind of a bad day for him. So we're just going to work really hard to make sure he doesn't have another bad day like that. But the positives that he brought before, he still brings. And so we're excited about it. Uh, during offseason conditioning, lifting, seven on seven, spring, fall, everything. How much, how big a deal was made of the fact to get back to the Big Ten title? Oh, but that's, that's why we wake up in the morning and brush our teeth and, and do what we do. I mean, that's, that's been the ultimate goal, the number one goal. The, the thing we had to do was get back there and, and, and win a championship for this university. So that, that's all we really talked about. There was no greater goal, nothing, nothing beyond that talked about. And that's been what our sites have been set on since day one. Pretty much every day. I'm not asking you to be the social media police here, but when when you see what Jalen's going through on, on Twitter, do you pull him aside and have a conversation with him? And then the second part of that is, when a guy that young goes through something like that, is that what can something like that make him a little jaded toward fans? Then, um, I think any young guy is going to have a reaction to something like that. But I've, I've pulled him aside. We've talked about it. And, and I, believe it or not, other guys have talked to him outside of me. I mean, Philly Brown talked to him and, and, and a, other guys just around the building that have dealt with that before have, have talked to him. So that's just I think that's a part of the maturation process of a football player at a university or a program of this magnitude. It happens everywhere. It happens to everyone. That's just something that maybe he hasn't experienced that now he has and he'll grow from. But I, I don't think it changed his feelings towards fans in general or anything like that. I think it was just something that he had to realize, like, okay, this is how th this is how it happens when things don't go well. I need to learn from this and realize that when things don't go well, not everyone's going to have my best interest in mind. A lot of fans defended him, too. Without so, a doubt. So it's Without a doubt. A vocal minority on there being kind of crazy on Twitter? No question. You know, it, it's just yeah. people are passionate about their team, and they should be. And so when things don't go well, they're passionate about them not going well. But it, it, for, for the most part, fans were – Supportive and awesome to him and to everyone, really. No, he. I, I brought it up. Just he. He never. It never phased him. It didn't seem like it phased him. But I wanted to address it because I know he saw it, and I know he's young. So I wanted to make sure that I addressed it with him before 
it festered into something else. 